But hello there. <clears throat> I'm Scotty. You're not welcome back to my tomorrow first reviews. We are on Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. It's back there. And of course, it's now focused on the Two Face side of the story, I guess. Now, there's a lot of shit going on in this movie. There's a lot. Like, I, I get they're taking it from the comics, but there's a. At one point, all the villains are released from Arkham. I don't think they do enough to qualify to be in this, but they were already featured in the first part, so whatever. Before I get into this, uh, I'm going to say it here. I was right. I was right. I looked at the bonus episodes, and it was the two-part, two-face episode from uh, Batman the Animated Series. I was right. I was right. Na -na 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 -boo -boo. Yes. So. Yeah. And then I pressed play on this movie and immediately got confused because it started with Bruce Wayne being mind controlled by Boyce and Ivy and I'm like, wait, did I miss something? Apparently, I did. So I went onto my Voodoo account, or Voodoo funding or whatever, right? And looked at the end. Apparently there was a post-credit scene I didn't know about in which at Alberto Falcone's funeral, Falcone tries to convince Bruce to be his partner. And Bruce says no. So he introduces him to a mysterious woman who ends up being Poison Ivy who shakes hands with Bruce and I guess puts him in mind control. Yeah. Believe me, I checked for a post-credit scene on this one. I don't. I, I looked the other ones. I don't think the other ones had post credits that I could find. Was there one in the Death Society one? Cause there's a interesting character that shows up at the end in the post credit scene, and I'm like, where did he come from? Did I miss something else? Ah. So, yeah. So, uh. Apparently three months have passed, and Bruce is still under the control of Poison Ivy. Catwoman shows up, takes up Poison Ivy, and frees him from Poison Ivy's control. So he's back. But Harvey has been on a... Harvey and uh, 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 Captain Gordon at this point have been, you know, trying to do this without Batman, basically trying to figure out stuff. Uh, it all goes south. Yeah, uh, Dent is pretty much implied to be Holiday at this point. Everybody thinks it's him. You have, um, Falcone's sister, who was, uh, VD's wife, going on a news program, basically said, it's, it's gotta be Dent, he's the only one that has the problem in my family, it's gotta be him, and so everyone's putting out things. Maroney agrees to testify in court, but that's a ruse, he throws acid, in Dent's face, and I went, okay, we, we kind of figured we're doing Two-Face, but I don't know. The way it worked, it worked well without Two-Face, that little tease. I knew it was coming. I thought maybe it would be a tease at the end. You know, the problem with Two-Face lately, <laughs> like, it either doesn't it's either overdone or not done enough. Like, so they were heavily teasing stuff. Remember that Gotham Knights show? They did, that was done perfectly well. They brought back the, uh, alternate, alter ego, Big Bad Harv type character. And that, and here, they do it again, but only in this part. I don't remember anything from the first part where it was implied he had a, another personality inside of him. It just started here. Yeah, but he's been scarred. He escapes from the hospital after Falcone calls him and says that they're going to uh, make a deal, but it's a setup to kill him because they think that he... Because well, at one point I should mention, so after Bruce comes back, uh, the past is brought up. Apparently, Bruce's dad made a deal with Falcone because... Uh, uh, he saved Falcone's life and they became business partners. But they think Maroney ordered the hit on 
the Waynes because of it. Yeah, so there's that connection. So Luigi Falcone was, is murdered by Holiday. There's a connection to Falcone here. And you're still supposed to believe it's Harvey at this point. What? But here's the thing. I said in my in my first review for the first part, I don't, I I never believed it was Harvey, even when they were really pushing it here. If they're gonna do the two face the two face thing, why would he be another separate villain called Holiday? It just doesn't add up, you know. It's like in Under the Red Hood, where the Red Hood was showing up. If they if they said, oh, it's just a joke because that's who he used to be, and it wasn't the actual Red Hood, you know. But, you know. You know what it is. But no. Um, then I started to realize who it was, and I was still confused. I'm like, okay, so the only suspect really left is um, Harvey's wife. And I'm like, <clears throat> but again, that doesn't make any sense. What's her, her connection to Falcone? Would, would, one thing I think of is that she's the fiance of she's Alberto's fiance, and she got pregnant. But then she's telling Harvey she can't have kids. It just didn't make sense to me. It didn't. And so, on not April Fool's Day, and it was another day. Mother's Day? It's, Mo it's Mother's Day, isn't it? I think it's Mother's Day. Uh, Scarecrow and Mad Hatter kidnap Batman, and he sprays Batman with the stuff. Was that? That's before. No, that's later. He, he blocks it, but... And so he thinks that... He's freaking out. He thinks that Catwoman is his mom. It's all messed up. Catwoman takes him home. He's cured. But the way they... He, checks him here, but later he uses the gas, because they actually want him to get infected here and not. And Harvey eventually escapes, right? Ends up in the sewer with Solomon Grundy. They have a conversation where Solomon Grundy starts with, born on a Monday. And then he finishes the rhyme, but then Solomon Grundy goes, born on a Monday. And it somehow convinces him that he's not Harvey anymore. He's Two-Face. So... And as I was watching, I'm like, this is, this is more violent than the last one. Well, I look at you in the back to show you that this, this one is rated R. The first part was not. I'm assuming altogether they were rated R. Because you get an F-bomb here, but like, you get one F-bomb. It's just later. Uh, there's a standstill because uh, Two-Face goes after Maroney is going to kill him, but Batman is disguised as a security guard officer, and they stop him, only for Holiday to show up and shoot Maroney, killing him, and then they, then he won't let uh, them kill, uh, go after Holiday, and that's what, he's like, okay, it has to be her, and he knows. There's a point, though, towards the beginning of this, before he turns into Two-Face, before any of that acid stuff happens, before the testifying does, where he's like, we left the basement door open again. And she goes, I wasn't in the basement. And we see Batman go down, and we see an Oxford banner and a gun underneath it. And it's like, okay. I don't know why you would keep guns in the basement of the house in Harvey's being accused. I don't know. It was like okay, so if it, and I, I, again, I refused to believe it was to believe it was Harvey, so it had to be her. Sure enough. Anyway, so eventually Harvey releases all the the villains from Arkham with the help of Grundy. Yeah, because it's like a sidekick now. Yeah, and they kidnap Falcone and sort of put him on trial, and then we find out. Why Catwoman is so, you know, keep following Falcone around and they did it. They did it. She's his daughter. <clears throat> yep. Daughter. Falcone ends up dead. Right? 
All the bad guys get sent back to Arkham, including Two-Face, who refuses to give up who he thinks it is. Although he sits in his cell and he goes, he says her name. I can't remember her name, so. Gilda. Gilda. And then we cut to Gilda at the house. And she's talking to someone who's obviously Batman. And she tells the story. Because this is where I'm confused, all right? I, I, I'm going pretty good. It's pretty good blood stuff, you know, pretty much as much well as the last one. A little more gory because of the R rating here. I'm like, okay, let's make some sense of this because it doesn't really make any sense. So, she was engaged to Alberto Falcone, Falcone, excuse me, but, uh, and she got pregnant. They weren't married yet, but she got pregnant. Uh, and... Falcone, Carmine Falcone, didn't like the fact of a child out of wedlock, even though they were going to get married, so, but it would have been born before they got married, I don't know why they just didn't rush the marriage, so, they, <clears throat> they canceled, like, he canceled the wedding, and he basically forcefully had her, um, gave her an abortion basically, but the method that they use, they don't say what it is, the method that they use, she says, it broke me, and I went, oh, so you weren't lying, because I was, the only thing I think was she was lying to Harvey, because she didn't want to go through a pregnancy again, or maybe she, she had like a, a, when she was pregnant with Alberto's kid, she had an abortion or something, or not abortion, but a, a miscarriage and she didn't want to go through that again and do that to Harvey like what happened with that but no it turns out that they did that to her and they it was the forceful abortion that caused her to no longer be able to have children and that was shit and in fact oh shit that no Batman says, is Holiday done? She goes, not done. Finished. I think this story was well done, but I do have a small, teeny, tiny issue. This is now the second Batman movie that I've watched, where we have this big mystery villain, and no offense, but it, own, it just ends up being some woman out for revenge. Now, you can't call out Wolf because they did it with Phantasm, right? And I remember being disappointed about the reveal that it was, uh, what's her face? Andrea. I'm like, really? A woman? Like, but the motives made sense. And here, they also make sense. But every silhouette they showed was a man's silhouette. So that's why I kept calling it he in the last one. Every silhouette they showed was a male silhouette. So, I know it's kind of like the Phantasm suit. You could make that suit any way, shape, or form. What was she wearing that made her look like a man here? It just didn't make any sense. I don't know. I also didn't like the, the, the villains. The, why did we need all the villains to escape? I, I don't know. I don't know. Only for Batman to take them. I don't know. And then we end on Halloween because we started there, we end there. And Bruce is like, Alfred, no one comes here on Halloween. And Selena is there, because they're a couple now. Then the bell rings, and there's a couple with their kid who's dressed as Batman. Yay. So there's one. And the movie ends. I'm like, okay, I need to see if there's a post credit scene. And there is. The bell rings again, and it's the Flash and Green Arrow. To my knowledge, we have not yet met the Green Arrow unless I miss something. Was there a post credit scene on this one? Because I don't remember the Green Arrow being anywhere. Unless Green Lantern, where my power was supposed to be before this? But according to the order, it's after this. So I don't know. Right? Did I do it wrong? Oh no. We'll find out. Because I know, I, from looking at the cast list, the Green Arrow is in the next one, I think. So I don't know. They'd be recruiting, right? Yeah. So, uh, all together now, 
the entirety of Batman and All Halloween is getting a pretty, 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 pretty good. The first part is a pretty good. This part was good. I'm going to give it a high middle of the road. Put together, it's a pretty good all the way around. I just I feel like the second part was a little bit eh. In the first part, the first part was really good. It feels, to me, and I know it's, you see it's coming, to me, I don't think you needed Harvey to be Two-Face. Because, like I said, they didn't do anything with his, I'll call it, Big Bad Harv persona. And all of a sudden, he just starts showing up here, out of nowhere. Now, I know they weren't planning on doing the continuation of this, but it... So that probably why it feels rushed. But like, build up that big bad heart persona. Maybe this ends. Like, maybe he figures out it's his wife and during during a confrontation, something happens where he gets scarred. Right? And it ends with him getting scarred like Two-Face. And maybe setting up something else. Who knows what. But... I don't know. Again, they weren't going to continue this, but... I don't know. It just... I just don't think Harvey needed to be all two-faced out for this. I mean, this worked better than The Dark Knight, which, you know, everybody praises, but I have issues with. Namely, the two-faced stuff that's just tacked on to the end of a movie that's already long enough to begin with. <clears throat> but I digest. Uh, yeah, this was good, so... Uh, I should mention it here. I did put a post. I forgot to mention the last one. I'm not going to be reviewing the showcase shorts. I did. I watched the Commandy one, and in watching it, there really isn't a lot that happens. It's only 15 minutes without the credits. Credits is like 20 minutes, but it's 15 minutes without the credits, and really isn't enough to talk about in a video. I'd have been talking here for five. Five minutes, maybe, and if you didn't, that's, that's not nothing worth a video, you know. So, not doing those. Sorry for those who are looking forward to the others. I know they're gonna be. I still watch them. I'm still gonna watch them, which means I gotta watch the, the losers. It's on this one. Blue Beetles on this one. Losers on the other one. I'll watch them tomorrow. Maybe I'll watch them later tonight. Who knows. Uh, I don't know if I'll do another one tonight, but yeah. So, what are your thoughts on Batman and Long Halloween Part Two? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.